Hello and welcome back to AC's Make and Repair. Well today on the channel I'm going to show you how I made this little lidded box. It's got a nice little dark contrasting knob on the top. It's a nice suction fit. Ideal for little gifts. This one's a fairly basic one. This one will be ideal for little things like earrings or, or rings etc. I concealed the join on the lid with a burn ring. And as you can see it fits nice and neat. Come along with me today, I'll show you how I did it. Firstly I started by cutting a blank. I'm using southern silky oak here. And compared to the northern silky oak, uh, which is the North Queensland one, this is a paler timber, but I actually like the grain in the southern silky oak um, a bit better. This one has a little bit of mould in it, which adds a bit of character to it. Um, some people don't like that, but I don't mind it. It's quite nice. As you can see, this is uh, on the outer side of the log. This piece of timber actually comes from a tree I cut down in 1998. Um, the log portion of it was about, I think about 20 foot long. It was about probably oh, close on 2 foot at the bottom and about 18 inches at the top the log that I got out of that tree and then I got it milled by a local mill many years ago. So here I set it up on the lathe. I'll turn it down and rough it out to a rough cylinder. I will cut a cylindrical dovetail at one end so that I can hold it in a small scroll chuck I have for the turning of the box itself. So here you see I mounted in the chuck, set it up, trim it down a bit, and then I start work on the, the lid end. Uh, that's where I start work first, and I face it off and I rough the corner off on the lid. And there's a little bit of a knot, as you can see, I just marked it out there, which was a bit of a shame, it seemed to go close. So I'm going to exclude that part. I was going to make the box deeper, but here you see I just face that end off. And now I'm going to start trimming that lid and clean it up, do the corner on the top and preparing the lid. I do most of the roughing out when it's in the chuck like this. I will use the base as a jam chuck. So the base of the box, I'll jam the lid back in with a nice tight fit. And that way I can trim the lid and the main body of the box together. So they're nice and uniform and the, I'll make sure the grain lines up nice and neat. So here you see me marking up the step, that's the height of the lid I want. So I cut in with a skew and then I cut in about 5mm so I make the male part on the lid and of course the body or the box part um, is the female side of the lid, uh, sorry the, the female side, so the top part um, I said, you know, I'm stepping in, I'm actually going in with a parting tool here, a lot of dust, a little tiny bit of smoke, you think there's a lot of smoke, a lot of that's dust, but uh, I go in with a parting tool, yeah, a fair way, in a minute you'll see me go in with a chisel and cut that shoulder, I cut it nice and clean and flush, and uh, 
So I make and I pay attention to the detail of the internal corner of the shoulder of the lid. You'll see what I mean when I part it off. This little tip in the center of the lid here, um, I do everything in my power to get rid of that. But it causes a bit of a problem in the later part of uh, the build of this littered box. I, I cleanly cut it off with a skew and face it off with a skew. And for some unknown reason, that little tip in the middle of the lid doesn't want to go away. So it caused a bit of a problem. Hence, so I ended up in the end of the video uh, cutting a um, nice little darker hardwood, what's a harder timber knob for the lid. And that does away with that problem. Right here, you see me part it off. So here you see me facing it off. I face it off using a skew and then I use a scraper just to clean it up nice and true. And then I eventually take a force and a bit and bore a hole up the middle uh, just to take the most of the, the timber out of the middle so I can just clean it up nice and neat quickly. So this is where I use the force a bit. I measure the depth. In my case, is about 40 millimeters. And uh, so I actually mark it so it comes short of the bottom. I actually stop about 30, I think. And that way it gives me plenty of uh, space to use a scraper in there, clean the bottom up and make it nice and neat. So I bore the center out now. And then I use other chisels just to hollow out the bottom of the box. Sorry about my hand being in the road. Um, I set the camera up so I could get a good shot of the bore of this and uh, didn't realise my knuckles would be in the road. So I just stop and check a few times to make sure I'm not going over. Eventually I do mark this. You'll see how I mark it in a second. I hold the lid over and I scribe a mark with a pencil. That gives the exact depth that I need to go. I mark that around the circumference with the pencil. Now what I'll do is I'll chisel that out and turn that out uh, to that mark. Just, just inside of that mark and I will check as I go until I get a really tight fit. Here I've obtained the fit that I want. It looks tight to you guys, but it's actually not um, I'm actually pushing a little bit skew with here. All of a sudden it goes in easy. It wasn't too tight that would have split the bottom. Sometimes you can split the bottom quite easily. So beware of that. I want it tight enough so I can push it back in and turn the lid quite comfortably on the bottom of the box so the two match up beautifully and neat and flush. So I spent a little bit of time cleaning up the bottom of that box. Uh, my head got in the road there at one time, so I just deleted that little bit. Sorry about that. But um, I cleaned it up. I pushed the lid back in there. You'll notice I line the, line the grain up. Uh, like I said, it would seem tight to you guys, but it's actually a really good fit. And so I line up the grain here now. I push the lid in nice and tight. There we go. And I bump it in. Now I trim the two together with the grain in line. That's what I do. Um, I make sure it's perfectly in line. Sorry about that, my arm's in the road. I'm actually getting it in the right position. There we go. 
I've got the grain exactly in line there as you can see and then I trim the two together which uh, brings it up really nice and neat So here I've put a couple of V grooves in, in preparation for some burn rings. I put three V grooves. As a result, I'm going to put two burn rings at the bottom. I'm going to use the, the join between the lid and the bottom of the box as another burn ring too. Um, I don't burn that straight away. I burn that later in the video. Um, I've got to be careful that I don't pop the lid off here. But it works quite good. It's even harder on the join. So I'll do that later in the video. I probably should have done it at this point because I'd done it just after a wax. Silly mistake. But you'll see what I do it later. That little mark still on the end of the lid is causing problems. I'll give it a great sand and try to sand it out. And then I've done lots of things to try to get rid of it. But it just doesn't want to go. So I give the whole lot of, a good sand with 120 here. And then I drop down uh, to two, I think I'll go to 200 or 220 or something like that. And then uh, I go even finer still to 240, I think, as my finish on this. So I still couldn't get rid of that little mark, so I decided to try to turn it out and see if I could get rid of it by turning it a little, little bit thinner. And I tried and tried and tried and couldn't get rid of it. I sanded it good again to try to see if I'd get it. I got it lots better than what it was. Just could not get rid of it. So you'll see me in a minute. I eventually drill a hole in it with a force and a bit to make like a little pinch grip. I thought that'll make a good little pinch grip for the lid. That'll be another way of doing the lid so you can just pinch it and lift the lid off. Uh, but I wasn't really happy with that either. After drilling the hole, I went on to give it a good finish sand here. I think it was actually finer than 240 this paper. And uh, it came up nice and smooth and neat. And then I went on to waxing it, as you'll see in a minute. I did that, put that other burn ring on the join in a minute. Like I said, I should have put it back earlier uh, when before I waxed it all. My mistake. Foolish mistake. When I sand the inside, the lid does go looser, but I want to finish the outside before I sand the inside, just in case you're thinking I'll have that lid that tight all the way through. Here I start waxing it. I'm just using straight beeswax here. Been rendered down very clean, this beeswax. Um, my daughter got some beeswax and she rendered it down really, really clean to make some candles that she did. And this was the, the waste that she gave me. And it's actually very, very clean beeswax. This is where I try to burn that burn ring in. As you'll see, I have a bit of fun doing it. But uh, nevertheless, I'll get it done. Very hard because you've got to try to hold the lid so it doesn't pop off. And because I'd waxed it, I shouldn't have waxed it. I should have burned it in before I waxed it. But like I say, I... Um, oversight on my behalf
there you have it you'd hardly tell there's a lid on that it came up quite good to join with the grain some people use a bead to conceal the join I think the burn ring did a good job of concealing the join now I'll go on to sanding the inside of the box and I'll also wax that too After doing the inside, I fit the lid again, but I'm not really, really happy about that pinch hole that I drilled. That's why I'm going to make the, the contrasting knob the lid. And here we're going on to parting off the base. So I part it off with the parting tool. Now for the turning of the knob for the lid of the box. This is a bit of burdock and plum. I buff it out. Down to a little cylinder. And then I concentrate on getting the tannin part of the knob for the lid right. I uh, test fit it a couple of times. Once I get the tenon to a tight fit, I then turn the knob to the shape I desired. Then fit it to a chuck to, to clean it up a bit more, sand it back nice and neat and then I put a couple of detailed little grooves in the top of that uh, knob as well as you'll see in a second. So here I wax it down, once I've waxed it down, I don't wax the tenon part of it, obviously, I remove it from the chuck, I actually clean up the hole inside the lid, so it's got no wax in it anymore, and I glue it in. Now here's the finished product, and as you can see it came up quite nice.
Now here's the base of the lid. After I parted it off in the lathe, what I didn't show you is I sanded it on the disc sander and it came up nice and neat and flat. We also did the same on the base of this box part on the bottom of it and that brings them up nice and flat and uniform. It is still a tight fit, it's a suction fit. You've got to line it up nice and neat. But as you can see, the grain lines up beautifully on it and it looks nice and uniform. Well, thanks for joining us today as I turned this little littered box. I hope it was informative enough. I lined the grain up nice and neat on it. And like I said, it's a nice suction fit. You could do these at home yourself. You can make them all sorts of designs. This was just a basic starters one. Thanks for joining us. Hit the like button if you liked the video. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. And please share me with your friends. Catch you on the next one. Bye for now.